welcome back to As Tom Tells It, episode five. Pretty interesting tonight. I have my nephew Matt here. Kind of a family tradition. We're going to talk about the things he does and learn about wood burning. Thanks for coming on tonight, Matt. So, you you grew up in Walford? I did. Went to school here. And um, spent many, many days uh, learning about uh, art and things here in town. So now you do wood carving or wood burning, what is it? This is wood burning. Okay. It's actually uh, hiography, which uh, I believe is the Greek word for writing with fire. Oh, okay. Um, it's it's kind of cool. cool. Um, but it's just it's something I've always been into the art. And uh, the past year or so, I really started more and more uh, concentrating on my uh, more detailed art. And wood burning. Um, it's turned out pretty well. So I come in and I want you to do something. So I give you a drawing or give you an idea. You will give me an idea um, and I will either come up with a computer generated design um, that I'll stencil on to a piece of wood or uh, a good portion of the time I will freehand burn it from there. If you wanted a plaque, you call me. I come up with a design, uh, send it to you for an approval. Once you approve it, then I get to work on it and uh, finish up. Because I like this kind of stuff. Is there a certain type of wood that's good or not good to use? Uh, the best kind of wood to use is uh, basswood. That was that's what this plaque is here. Uh, it's basswood. It's a it's a softer wood. Uh, burns really well. Of course, you still have to sand it down. Uh, my process is I sand the wood when I get it, basically wet it down, let it dry, and it brings the grain up a little bit, and then resand it. You you wet it, sand it. Would you draw this on there first? Yes. Oh uh, no, actually I sand it, prep the wood, and then either stencil or draw the draw the design on there, and then get to burning it. You know, when I was a kid, we had these little burning kids. You know, I burned myself more than the wood, but. Uh, now, there's different tips and everything that you use? There is. Uh, the, the machine you were talking about, the you know, one you could get at a, a local store, I've used those in the past. Uh, they've come so far now. This is the unit that I use. That little part. All that did this? Yes. This is uh, my power supply, which is regulated heat. Uh, this has uh, a variety of different tips. This is a very fine tip. That usually I do a lot of outlining with. Then I have a shading tip, which you can see is thicker, wider. Uh, this will do a lot of shading. This tip here is more flat. This will burn very, very dark. Uh, so this is for all the really dark, dark areas. Uh, this is, and believe it or not, this is one of the smaller signs I've done. I've done much smaller, um, and I've done much larger. Uh, I've done a Huge barbershop sign for uh, a barbershop that we're not uh, in Colorado, which is hanging on the wall of downtown Denver. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, which is uh, three feet, three feet high by two feet wide, and it is a giant oval. So did this guy call you? Uh, this lady did call me. She had uh, found me on social media, and uh, I tried to tell her that there's other wood burners uh, that I talked to and message. And she said, no, I like your work. Oh, and nice. we took it from there. She bought that sign, and then she had moved to another location, and she needed another sign a year later. And she contacted me again. So I had done two signs for her. She didn't invite you out there and pay for it? Uh, that would have been nice. She did say she'd give me a haircut. <laughs> well, in your case, you don't want to go too much. No. I've always wondered, do you have to press down hard to make these letters? Or you really don't. You have to really be consistent with your pressure. You don't have to go really hard. If you go real hard, it'll look like you're, when you're using a, a, a marker, if you go and you stop, it kind of bleeds out and makes a, a big circle, per se. Uh, it does the same thing with the burning. If you don't have a consistent line and you stop, it'll get bumpy. So you won't have a nice... So this was probably done with that pin. This one was 
Uh, uh, which ones would, did you use for this? I used this uh, one. And that would do what? This was used for all the outlining. All the, all the other side? All the outlining. Mm -hmm. Outlined everything with this tip, which is very, very small at the, at the tip. And then I did all the shading with this one. Which is this interior stuff? Uh, which I did a lot of the interior with this, which I couldn't get with this. I did use with this tip, which is also an outliner. Uh, but I use it a lot for shading. Uh, you know, they, they say this is for outlining, this is for, but it's all personal preference. I find that some things that they recommend works better for something else. <laughs> well, you learn on your own. Yes, yes. yes. So you outline this first. Yes. And then use that thick one to get this? Correct. Now that's all steady hand, correct? Yes. I would do it like this is smaller, obviously, mm -hmm. than that. All my all freehand. We've done some shows where uh, people told my wife it's done by a machine, and she assures them no, it's not. Oh, so that's we've uh, that's a problem. We've been to craft fair where we actually uh, set up, and my wife was running the table, and I was in the background burning, so people really got to see what the process was, and uh, it's. Very cool. And so you could do this for any individual, any company? Yes. Whatever them. Do they mostly send you logos or ideas, just pictures? I have done uh, a ton of logos. Um, I'm very active on social media uh, with, uh, I do a lot of motorcycle riding, so I'm with a lot of uh, different moto blockers, and I've done countless of their logos for them. If people need logos done, uh, could you do a photo? Uh, photos, what I usually do with photos is I tell people I, I, I don't do portraits per se. Um, I will take a photo and try to silhouette it. So Ooh, that's it's not a, you know, it's not a dark, dark silhouette, but it is, it is a silhouette, but it's, it's shaded. Uh, so it's not a not a portrait, it's more of a silhouette. Those are kind of cool. And really people cool. really like that. Uh, it, one lady contacted me last year. Uh, unfortunately, her father passed away, and she had two pictures of one of her son and one of her daughter with her father. And uh, one, he was pushing the daughter on a swing, the other, he was walking the son. I silhouetted both of those. Oh, that must have been cool. And uh, she had sent me. Was it two separates? It was two separates. Oh, that's nice. That's and, nice. Uh, I sent them to her, and she sent me pictures back of both the kids, uh, and they're grown kids now, uh, holding the plaques. And uh, it was, you know, kind of really makes me feel good when, you know, uh, she wanted this done and she trusted me to do this work. Now, you do stuff with the motorcycle people. Do you do anything with the veterans? I do. Um, I do things, I try to do as much as I can. Uh, with the veterans, um, I had one lady contact me. Her husband is a Vietnam vet. Um, I have a, a big advocate for veterans. I want to thank you for your service. And this lady contacted me, and her husband's always been kind of set. You know, he never really got a welcome home coming back from Vietnam. Um, which those stories have always kind of really touched me. And she gave me the company and all the details of what he was in in Vietnam. And I made a plaque similar to this uh, uh, oval with a map of Vietnam in the back. Oh, that's cool. And his, his company. And uh, on the top of the plaque was, thank you for your service. And it's all burned. It's, it's all burned. And uh, his emblem for his company was, it had some red in it. So I was able to put color that in. How do you do that? I colored them, believe it or not, with a colored pencil. Uh, colored, colored pencil, and uh, I will spray it, clear it, and then uh, once that dries, I'll put a polyacrylic over it, uh, which really gives it a nice. So this would, it's better to put, put something on it. Yes, yes. yes. It's uh, like this one here, I actually, believe it or not, just finished last night. This is not stained or clear. This is uh, natural basswood. So, 
this week and I, I go home and stain it, clear it uh, a few times. And the uh, powder acrylic really gives it a nice uh, glossy look. I was wondering, since you know what I'm going to talk about, do you put your name on the back like our grandfather did on all of the things that he did? I actually do. Um, I put I write my initials just like my grandfather, your father. The the K attached to the M and uh, three. Oh. Uh, so it's uh, I'm always proud to do that. And uh, I know uh, my grandfather was uh, very much into wood. He did wood carving. Uh, so I, I feel that uh, even though he's been gone for so long, uh, kind of get that connection to him a little bit, uh, which always kind of. That makes me feel good. Well, how big could these be? Uh, like I said, I've done one, my biggest one so far, I've done, uh, it was a three foot tall oval. Cool. Uh, by 24 inches wide. So, that's a lot of burning? That is a lot of burning. That particular plaque, that's the one that's in a barber shop in Denver, that actually took me close to about 10 hours to burn. Uh, Same kind of wood? Uh, actually, that was a birch, a birch, uh, basically a birch plywood, which birch plywood is uh, really nice to burn on. Uh, it's not as soft as a basswood, I find, um, but it, it burns really well. So you know if I want to do the wood, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm saying here, but the right pressure, how much you got to use for yes. whatever the customer is looking for. Exactly, and if it's a wood that I haven't used before, uh, I will usually try to find a scrap piece uh, and, and do a little testing. Uh, you know how much pressure I can really use. Uh, basswood is very light pressure, and uh, you know, so it's, I, I can sit down and, and do a black and you know get it, get it done uh, in a, a fair amount of time. Uh, oak, I burned on oak. Is that a hardwood? Oak is a hardwood, and it's, uh, I've really got to turn heat up real high on this. Um, so this goes, you know, basically 1 through 10. Uh, for example, basswood, I burn it about uh, 4 and a half, which I don't know what, what temperature that is. But you don't touch it. But I don't touch it. No. Uh, I have calluses on my fingers <laughs> from the burn, uh, from the pen. Uh, but oak. Oak, I've cranked the heat up to almost eight or nine, and uh, it, it still burns. It, it still looks good. It just takes a little longer because the wood is harder and it takes more heat. Do you show this stuff in fairs or anything like that? I do. So my wife helps me quite a bit with the fairs, and we used to do quite a bit of shows, uh, you know, locally, and uh, we've kind of cut down. To maybe one or two a year now, uh, just because uh, social media is is uh, very busy. Uh, so I get a lot of custom stuff, and I really don't have the time to between a full time job mm -hmm. and this uh, to have a good amount of inventory uh, for craft fairs. But I'm doing a craft fair. I have one scheduled for September for here in Wallingford. Uh, local uh, Boy Scout oh, trip, cool. actually where both my sons were uh, attending for Boy Scouts. So I still try to uh, support the Boy Scouts. Have you ever thought about teaching this in like adult education or something like that? Uh, I've thought about it. I I would think there would be a, a pretty good appeal on that. I would like to uh, sometime, sometime. Uh, just to find the time and uh, Find the time, and I don't know if I'd really be a good teacher or not. Uh, well, you're doing fine now teaching me about stuff I don't know anything about. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, it's uh, you know it's it's a great hobby, and kind of you know started as a hobby, and now it's basically turned to a business. Uh, well, you know what they say: a hobby that's a passion can be a business that can make you a lot of money. You don't go to work every day, it's something you love. Mm -hmm. it's, it works out right. Yes. And she's behind you, so that's important. Yes, she is. She's uh, probably my number one supporter, uh, my wife, and uh, you know she'll 
always I always get the okay from her first. You know, even though a customer wants a design, uh, I'll stencil it or draw it on and be like, okay, what do you think? So, well, a little bit more, a little this way. Yeah, I've noticed that uh, they, they have a knack for knowing better than we do. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially on, 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 on the way things are made up and, and laid out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always will double and triple check and always ask my wife, you know, how's this look? Uh, no, maybe take this away, add this. Uh, so. do, you, do you have a gender of, of, of people versus male versus female, old, young? Is it across? It's, it's across the board. Um, I've actually done quite a bit of donations to uh, I'm a big advocate also not only for veterans and uh, animal rescues uh, but uh, advocate for women motorcycle riders really um, there's uh, I think more women should be riding motorcycles uh, my wife chooses not to she's on the back of mine um, that that is fine she's my best riding partner there is um, but I think it's great to see I've ridden with women, and uh, I will ride with women on a motorcycle anytime. Um, there's a couple events that I did their awards for. Uh, one was an award for last year's, uh, it was in Joshua Tree, California. Uh, over 5,000 female motorcyclists were there. Well, wow. uh, and I made the award for most miles ridden. Uh, and a lady from, I want to say New Jersey rode her bike all the way to Joshua Tree, California. Now these are the big bucks? These are the big bikes, yes. Um, you know, and they ride anything from, you know, Harleys to anything. Um, you know, to me, it's, uh, it's on two wheels. It's the same wind, like I tell everybody. I actually just sent out another uh, award for an event in New Mexico for this weekend, an all-women's oh, wow. uh, camp-out weekend uh, for motorcycling. And uh, another one, that it's not most miles ridden, this was called the Saddlesaur Award. Oh, so, <laughs> um, I don't know who's who's got, who's got getting it, uh, but she's gonna let me know, and it's actually one of the sponsors for that event uh, by making the plaque. And I'm thinking, have you ever been to Laconia uh, for, for an event like this? I have not um, been to Laconia many times, um, but not for uh, Bike Week. Okay. Um, you know, but uh, I've thought of people have told me um, that, uh, we have a, a trip planned next year for a bike event, uh, Lake George, which is American, and we're going up as a family. My youngest son. Uh, will be riding next year, so him and I will ride up together, which is kind of cool. Uh, you know, people say, no, you don't want to a bend up there. Uh, I would have to make so much stuff, uh, it would be unreal. Um, and then, you know, you'd have to sit at a, a booth, uh, which I wouldn't mind, um, but I don't know, first time at an event like that, I think I just want to go ride my bike. <laughs> you know, I know something else you guys do. Surprised you didn't talk about it yet. You can do this wood burning for your camping stuff that you guys go to. Uh, I've done a lot of camping signs. <laughs> that would be that's got to be fun because they there must be funny signs and there is there's there's so many uh, fun signs. Uh, I've made one for our camper. Uh, it's actually it says Mr. and Mrs. K's hideaway. Okay. Um, and it's got I think it's got a palm tree for my wife and a. I still wet up a motorcycle for myself, uh, and a lot of I've done a lot of we're at a, a campground here in the state, and uh, I've had a lot of people come and want like, different signs for their campers. You know, if I asked your kids, they got any signs, especially the ones that are married. Did you make anything for them? Come on! I actually did. My uh, oldest son, when he got married, I made a, a plaque for uh, the table at his wedding. Oh, okay. okay. Him and my daughter-in-law's name on it. Um, so that, and I actually did that the night before they got married. Wow. <laughs> now you know you can do one for the fifth and the tenth, and that's all you got to give them. You know. Yeah. 
This is true, because one of the anniversaries is wood, so, you know, <laughs> we've got that covered. Uh, but uh, my kids, yes, uh, my daughter got a house, and uh, just waiting to see what she wants for a sign. My youngest is a welder, and I've made him a couple signs already. Oh, that's cool. Welder. Didn't he just graduate? He did. He just graduated. As a matter of fact, Tuesday, uh, certified uh, through his job as a welder, and uh, he's loving life. He that's a job that can't come overseas. No, no. He uh, he's got his niche as a welder, and he's he's very good as a young. So he's got to have the steady hand that you have, especially for the welding stuff, right? He does have a pretty steady hand, believe it or not. Yeah, I want to teach you. Know, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can do the wood. He can do the welding. Yes. Yep. Work together on that. He's yeah. actually, uh, he's made me a custom, I mentioned one time to my wife, I want to get a custom um, sissy bar for my bike. And we have a nice touring bike. And uh, son came up one day, he's down the garage, banging away and everything. And uh, he came up and he made a design out of, one by one, I think it was half by half metal, square stock, and uh, measured it to my bike, and welded it together, did all his welding stuff, which I don't know a lot about welding, so uh, he had a, I, my stepfather passed away back in 01, and I got his toolbox, and he had this big, huge wrench in it, so my son had forged it and twisted it. Wow, without breaking it? Without breaking it. Uh, he had welded that in the center of the sissy bar. So it's kind of a, a really sentimental piece to me. Well, that's really cool. Because that's my stepdad's wrench. My son made it. It's on my so bike. it's uh, it's it's the sissy bar on the oh, back. Oh, okay, the back. Uh, so it, it's great. Yeah. Now that put on that was put on so your wife doesn't fall off. <laughs> Actually, she used a different one because this one doesn't have a pad on it. Um, <laughs> So it doesn't have a cushion, so she would, I, I couldn't do that to her. <laughs> so this could, this business could really grow for you, with, with the need and the, the want. With the it, it could. Uh, I'm always trying to think of new, new designs, and I'll come up with a lot of designs on my own uh, to do, and I'll try to do some other I've done some with uh, some mixed media pieces, which is a uh, different material on the wood. Uh, I've done a couple with uh, a couple, I forgot what it was, but I had like a, a feather decal on there uh, that I incorporated with the wood burning. So it kind of gave it a, a different feel, not just wood burning, but it was you know, also a picture on there. And it was a couple feathers, I forgot what the, what the saying or the quote was on the plaque, but uh, it came out really well. That was actually my wife's idea to, to mix that together. I'm starting to burn a little on leather, leather, uh, which is very interesting. Leather smells really good when it's burning. Um, like uh, the uh, Western belts? Like the Western belts, yes. I, I'm starting off small. Uh, I've done some keychains. Burn some motorcycle stuff on there, pet paws or something like that, and uh, I didn't sell them because I didn't know how they'd go. Uh, so I actually put it as a as a giveaway on my social media. There you go. And, uh, so how's that social media part go? That's where you're getting some of your business or most of your that's business. That's where I get probably 95% of my business is social media. Uh, I've uh, shipped pieces as far off as uh, New Zealand. Whoa. Uh, and pretty much all around the U.S., uh, which is really cool. I keep telling my wife, I want to get a big map. And, uh, Put the little pins on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, but you know what? She's going to go. Let's go here. We haven't been here. Let's not ship it. Let's drive out here because I happen to know Lisa, so she'll watch you yes. do that. Yes. Well, you know, we're already talking retirement, even though it's uh, you're a kid, 10 years away. Yeah. Uh, but we're at that's our plan, do a little traveling. Uh, the kids are out gone, all, all the kids are gone? Uh, Hopefully. Well, the kids are all gone. They're not going to come back tomorrow. Uh, we're not going to let them. We downsized in the house, so uh, 
Uh, we have our youngest living with us. He's 20. Uh, so, you know, he's just starting out with his welding career. So, Did he get a job right away? Uh, he did. He actually wow. did a uh, work school, uh, work-based learning, uh, where a company in town here in Wallingford was uh, nice enough to get on board with his trade school. And he worked through school, a part of school. And uh, he said he graduated Tuesday. He went to work full-time Wednesday. See, that's nice for the young kids. Yes, and uh, he's, he loves it. You know, the long days, I think he's got to get used to because uh, the first day he came home and he crashed out of my recliner. So well, it was like an eight hour day, like the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he'll get used to it. Yeah, but he's kind of funny. He's kind of cool, so that's just yeah, me. But he, he loves what he does. And, uh, you know, but you got to do that. That's just like you do here. If you love what you do, it's not a job. Right. right. And exactly. there's a passion, there's a need, and you're providing it something so everybody's. Everybody's all wrapped up and everybody's happy about it. Absolutely. And uh, I hope to one of these days uh, collaborate with my youngest, who's the welder. And uh, you know, I always thought about getting a nice big piece of log and burn on that and, you know, have him make the nice raw iron twisted oh, yeah. legs for it. That would be nice. Uh, so that's something I look forward to in the future, you know, once he gets a little more established with his job and gets the time. I'll swear it away. I'm uh, sure we'll sit in the garage and work out. Now, something. this is kind of basic, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, why don't you tell us about that one? Uh, this one here is just actually a design I came up with. This uh, right. Is this the same type of wood? This is the same type of wood. This has uh, bark edges. This is actually two pieces of wood. You know, this piece here I, I mounted on here. Actually, me, this is a, either a coat or a hat rack. Because as a motorcycle, and this one's sealed. This is all sealed. Yes. Uh, you know, this is a little more detailed bike. Uh, that that's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as a motorcyclist, you know, you have something hanging on a wall. You were looking to replace it with your keys, your sunglasses. <clears throat> so I made this as a, a shell. Sunglasses, hang your keys, hang your hat. Uh, so it's you know, now you can get different stains. I can't get different stains. This is a. a this was a very light stain, and I cannot remember what the name was. I think it's a golden oak or something. Uh, but I do uh, stay, I, a very light, light stain, and then the polyacrylic, uh, which really brings out the, uh, it that, that's that really nice. That's, that's impressive. impressive. Thank you. Thank you. It was good. Um, but my favorite thing is, you know, I always tell everybody, you know, ride safe and enjoy the journey. So, I had to put so there's no, right. no bar here, so she couldn't ride on this bike. Uh, she, she could not, no. no. Um, she wouldn't put a towel on the bedroom, right? <laughs> <laughs> we joke, but we both love her to death. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. She's uh, my best friend and uh, you know, helps me with, supports me 100% with everything I do. Well, I appreciate you coming on the board. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Yes, I do. I want to give this to you. I made this for you. Oh, okay. Token my appreciation for coming on this, uh, the show and uh, thanking you for your service. I appreciate you coming on today and uh, good luck. Thank you. See you a little bit later. Yes, it's almost gone. Okay, thanks very much. Hey, don't forget those two minute tips that are coming up. Welcome to Tom's Two Minute Tips or Less. Tonight's tip PowerPoint. Make it simple, clear, and make it memorable. Seven points that you need to think about today. Number one, 2009 Steve Jobs video. Watch it. He set the standard for the rest of us with simple, direct, one word, one picture. Number two, PowerPoint is only a tool to help you convince your audience. Number three, you are the message, the messenger, and the presenter. It's all about you, they buy, and believe in you. Number four, why is the screen on the, their left and the speaker on their right? It goes back to when we are learning as little children to read from left to right. Number five, black screen. Keep the slide up there for about 20, 25 seconds so they can read it and go to black screen. It automatically makes them shift their eyes back to you, the presenter. Number six, please, no transitions. 
Don't make them think. Number seven, PowerPoint is like a movie. It's easy to watch. Show them the problem. Show them the path and teach them the solution. If you use those seven tips, you'll grow. See you at the next tip.